October 19, 1979, the Blue Mango Restaurant began through the initiative of an idealistic and daring bunch of students, artists, writers, cooks, and entrepreneurs. Now this is my even further back idea of how the whole thing came about. And there were a couple of dance troops in town. One was the fly-by-night troupe, which I was involved in heavily. And um, there was kind of community around that troupe and also around just above sea level. And it's sort of, there was community there. And then um, that dance troupe ended, ended in a lawsuit. There was this community of men and women and meetings and the women kind of there were women who were saying we should get land together and we should start a farm and so that became something that a lot of people wanted to do except they realized in order to do that they needed some money and then the mexican kitchen went out of business and marty franco and god i don't remember who else were the real instigators but i do remember her saying, okay, well, we're going to start a restaurant, and that's the way we'll make the money to then buy land so we can have this community of people. We didn't know that we could all get together or not get along or not, but that's, that was sort of how the mango was going to come about. And I must say that those early meetings were really good practice for working at the mango, as you probably heard. Needless to say, we never bought any land and had a farm, and instead the whole thing became... The community really was here at the Mango. And that it, was, it was around the time that a lot of stuff started, such as the farmer's market. Um, and then the people that were into, that had been plant science majors, a lot of them were starting organic farms. That was like a, a new thing and it was kind of radical and it wasn't part of the mainstream at all at that time. A few of the young people had, um, were going out and actually starting farms built everything up the way we wanted it, we planned it. It was so much fun to be able to take a dream and to build it, to work on it, to take a business plan, five years, to see it blossom with the strength that could carry it another 10 years. Because without that duration, it couldn't have had the impact it had. Maybe other people have different opinions or ideas of how the mango got started or the name came about. I have my memory and I wouldn't argue with anybody else, but as far as just a name, um, we, while we were trying to get this restaurant up and running, there were three names that emerged. There was Jed Downhill had said he wanted to call it the Fiddle and Spoon Cafe. Marty Franco wanted the Magic Kitchen. And Bill Cavins and I were really hot on the Mother Moose Cafe. And, but nobody had a quorum. And uh, it just so happened that Julie Partansky lived right behind me. And she had one of her cute little crazy cottages in the alley way in the back. And I went back to talk to her about something and we were sitting on a lawn and I saw this strange blue thing in the grass over there. And I said, hey, Julie, what's that? And she, she looked over and she said, oh, that's a blue mango. And, and I was with Cynthia Martin Croner, 
and Julia, and I don't know if all three of us said it or just what, but I'm sure we kind of went, hmm, the blue mango. It just all of a sudden rang like a name. And I got very excited about it. And so I actually wrote little notes. I went on this little campaign. First I had to convince Bill to drop the Mother Moose Cafe. And I wrote things like, honey, meet me at the mango, and snuck into his house and put it on the bathroom mirror and went to other people's houses and say, and wrote little things that said, how about dinner at the Blue Mango? And anyway, that's, that's how the mango got its name. <laughs> We wiped out the magic <laughs> kitchen, the silver and spoon, and the mother moose. Nice. <laughs>
the proposal that was being dis to discussed. But the point is that if you did block, then you had to make a commitment to work with some other people to resolve your conflicts so that you could bring the proposal back at the next meeting and not have it be a conflict anymore. And I learned a lot about group process from being involved in that. I re yes, remember meetings. some. <laughs> oh, oh, the meetings. It would be the general meeting. We could spend two hours on silverware, on a spoon, you know, and just, just when you were like fed up to the hilt with someone, all the, all the things you couldn't possibly imagine we'd talk about, about silverware. And then you'd think, oh gosh, maybe this is going to end now. Then someone would go, well, wait a second, I have something else to say about the spoon and about its shape and how I don't think that, you know, enough tofu would get on a smaller, well, whatever it would be, and we'd be on it for like another half hour. So, and then after you have the general meetings, then there the word, whatever team you belong to. Like I was a weight team, weight person team, so I'd have to go to the weight person meeting. So I think I went to more meetings than I went to actual hours of work. And the food at the Blue Mango was really good. I mean, that was really what attracted people back. The dinners were excellent. There was good Mexican food. Uh, you get smoothies there, healthy, local, organic, fresh veggies, uh, really good omelets, great Sunday brunch, r really good, really good yeast gravy. I loved the yeast gravy. Was that, that your favorite? My favorite had to be the yeast gravy. Yeah, the nutritional yeast gravy. Nice. I think you were the first dishwasher as far as... Uh, I was the first captain of the dish team. Captain of the dish team, okay. I wrote the dishwasher's guide, which is, anyway, 10 pages of it. Well, but just before you... Uh, officially became that it was like open and whoever got there was washing dishes you know was like <laughs> well yeah <laughs> like if you, if you felt like washing dishes you know just i hardly remember that i remember that i remember the, <laughs> huh. the morning you came in there and uh growled at me because, oh, really? because it was officially uh ah. supposed to uh and my shift man <laughs> got in my space the shift actually kicked in and i i wasn't really on on any uh, shift or anything. I just got uh, work exchange benefits from uh, doing the compost. So that kind of put me in a space there and I, I no longer had the freedom to uh, you know, walk in there and wash dishes <laughs> when I wanted to. <laughs> that was fun anyway. It was a coming of age spot for so many people, I know. Uh, so there are many personal stories uh, that are sort of lined up with that, but uh, out of it came uh, a bunch of creative people, uh, many that are still involved in culinary arts or human services or human welfare. It's really a, a terrific, a rich legacy in terms of the individuals that have come through and how it impacted them, uh, because most of them are involved now in uh, the care industry in some way. Pretty much everything that I do now in my life, I'm, I'm 42 now, and this was in my early 20s when I was here in Davis, everything that I do now in my life was affected by working at the Blue Mango. Uh, the people I met there, um, the things I learned there, and kind of sent me off in the direction of where I've gone now, being a massage therapist. Got my first massage from a coworker here at the Blue Mango, being a musician. First gigs were here at the Blue Mango being a photographer, all the creative people I met when I was working here at the Blue Mango who inspired me to do their own thing uh, because they were so creative. So yeah, I, I see it as a transformative period in my life where I met just about you know, every sort of inspirational person I could meet and led me down the path that made me who I am today. Uh, still, uh, even this year, and it's a 15 years ago when we opened, I think I had some people, they were coming in and asking for the Blue Mango. <laughs> the reputation was pr pretty, pretty big then. <laughs> <laughs> so, the Blue Mango was an amazing uh, spot with the music, the uh, great wait staff, the food, and all of that. And I would say, in my humble opinion, that since the closing of the Mango, the city of Davis has gone to hell in a handbasket. You know, I mean, look around and see what we've gotten. That's it.
Thank you. 